In today's video, we're looking at how you can make dribble sandcastles at home and keep them around for a while. Over the years, I suspect that millions and millions of people have discovered dribble sandcastles. Pretty much anyone who goes to a oh, yeah. lake, river, ocean, big body of water that also has sand has probably figured out that you can take the wet sand and just dribble it down and it'll like build up into these very organic looking stalagmite type things. It's a lot of fun. Here's the basic idea. A lot of people who have been to the beach or a lake have discovered the fun of making sandcastles by dribbling water and sand mixed together. Today we're going to look at how you can do that at home and what you can do to make it so they don't fall apart as soon as they dry out. Well, right here where we film things, uh, we don't have a lake, a river, or an <laughs> ocean, uh, but we do have sand. It costs like four dollars or something like that. Play sand is cheap and uh, we've got a little tray. So I did some experimentation to see what it would take to make dribble castles work with play sand, because if you just grab the play sand as is, it really doesn't work very well. It's not fine enough grit. Well, it's actually both. It's got too large of grit and it's got too fine of grit. So okay, you need to Goldilocks. take out both of those things, exactly. You need to take <laughs> out both the too fine and the too coarse to get it to work. So first step, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna pour off some play sand into this bowl. Now we have to clean it in two ways. We have to get rid of the small grains, we have to get rid of the larger grains. We just want those perfect sized medium grains. Easiest way to do this is at a hose sand. But I also got this one bag of decorative sand. This also works. I've got a hose, just running water, and I'm honestly just going to wash the sand. And you can see how all of the water just immediately gets cloudy. That's from just the very, very small, fine particles of like sand dust, and we don't want any of that. So we need to get rid of all of the finest grains of sand because they'll actually stop the water from leaving. It's very similar to rinsing rice, to be entirely honest, when you're rinsing the starch off of your rice to cook. We're literally just washing rocks. Well, yeah, see how it like, you can already see through it almost immediately. Uh -huh. That's a good sign. Now the white sand that you're using is already like exclusively below a certain grain size. Mm -hmm. The play sand has a lot of much larger sand in it. We don't want that. So I've just got a sieve. This is just from a kitchen. And so I'm now going to run all of my sand through this as well. And then I'm just gonna... Get the larger pieces out. Yep. There you go. All of this, too large to fit through my sieve and would really mess with the flow of our dribble castles. I've now sieved, I think, all of the sand in here. It's very possible that there's still a few little clumps of larger rocks, something like that. It's not important that you get 100% of them off. It's just important that you get most of them out so they don't mess with the structural integrity of your castles. I'm just gonna do a quick test. I have a little bit of wet sand here and I'm just gonna take a little bit of my sand out of the bowl. It still has water in it. And I'm just gonna do a little test about the dribbling. And there we go. We're already seeing the result we want, which is that it piles up nicely. And as it drips, like even a single drip carries some sand with it and just builds onto it. And you can see that like, while it pours on really wet, it very quickly dries out a little bit. Obviously the water doesn't all go away, but it's no longer like shiny wet. And that happens almost instantly. We've now got our little tray and I've filled it up with just some more of the play sand. Ideally I would wash this as well, but because it just doesn't have much water in it, it should be able to absorb quite a bit. So the water should be able to flow out of our castles down into the base somewhat, but it can't really go anywhere because it's contained by this tray. So you just grab your sand with lots of water and you can see that water runs off of it and it's very sandy water. Look, you can even see it just drip down onto my finger and it just leaves sand behind. That's what you're doing. That's the whole goal is you just drip sand and water. And right now my hand isn't water permeable, so it all just stays wet. But when you do it onto the sandy surface, all of the water runs out of the sand and it just starts building up in these really cool stalagmite formations. It's a very free form type of art. <laughs> you just go however you want. These tiny little drops can keep going. Although eventually if you put too much on, obviously it is going to collapse. And if you're very patient, ah, I was almost patient enough. You can get them to connect. It's not easy, but you can do it. Ah. Oh. No. This happens when you try and go hollow. Ah. 
So I just really quick, I want to do a side by side to show what happens if you use the sand that you haven't washed and adjusted for grain size versus the sand that you have. So first, I mean, this is the same stuff. It's the sand I've washed. Let's make a little dribble. And then I'm going to try and do another dribble right next to it and try and get to like the same size. Here goes. All right, that took a few seconds. Now I'm going to try the stuff I haven't washed out. Yeah, you're just making a sand pile. I mean, it's working a little, but you see that? Like more got on, but because there isn't, like the small grains haven't been washed out, when I put more water on top, it tends to just all be so liquid and heavy that it falls apart. If you're doing this and you want any sort of larger structures, your best bet would be to have like a bowl this size full of dry sand when you start, because we've actually filled most of this container with water to the point where our base is becoming a little unstable. It doesn't want to absorb any more water. And so all the additional water is gonna start washing away at the foundations a little bit. Liquefaction! Ah! Try and save some of the white sand. Yeah. I wanna try something I, I actually haven't tried at all before. I experimented a lot trying to get the right consistency of sand, but one thing I hadn't tried is to see if we can make colored sand castles. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of food coloring and see how well this takes. I'll try pink. That is pretty much guaranteed. I'll go with green. I suspect yours will take color nicer than mine. Yeah, I've got the white almost craft sand here. I'm gonna try my little pink castle here. Oh yeah. And you can see how far the pink water like is spreading mm -hmm. into the sand base, green water in your case. Now we've figured out a couple good ways to make our castles, but one thing I wanna do is try and make them a little longer lasting. So I've got here some clear <laughs> Elmer's glue. I'm just going to start adding that into my sand and water and I'm going to keep adding it. And the thing is I don't want to change the consistency. I really wanna keep it nice and thin and runny. So I'm just gonna add probably a few tablespoons. Now it's not going to act as glue right now, but as it drains out of the sand and gets thinner and thinner, what we should get is a very fine layer of the glue that just stays behind coating everything. The idea is that after it's coated, you can let it dry, and rather than just collapsing as it dries, it will hold in its shape. It's not going to be invincible. If you bumped into it, you'd still be able to knock it down, but it should hold its shape considerably better than if you just had a pile held together with water. My consistency has gotten just a touch thicker and I'm not sure if I've added too much glue. If I have, I can just add a little bit more water and stir it again to thin it back down. But I'm gonna test it right now and see if I'm getting a nice dribble. It could be that it's not going to flow as nicely because of all of the glue and if that happens, then you know I'll need to thin it down so that it flows nicely and that the water glue actually comes out of the sand. So it's slower. It takes just a hint longer for the shininess of the water to leave the sand. And I think I actually do want to water it back down a little bit. So I'm just going to add back in a little bit of water to dilute this. All right, that seems to be working pretty well. Callie has been mixing up three different colors of our sand using the white sand. So it takes the color much better. And we've filled a large bowl with the playground sand. That should give us a much better base, a deeper base so that if we do try and build higher, it's not going to get flooded with water like this one did. You know, this works great for small little castles. If you're trying to go bigger though, you end up with too much water in it. You could probably solve that by a number of different ways. Like you could have a base with holes in the bottom and you know, do the whole thing on a pile of sand outside or something like that. Just so there's enough room for water to run out and not build up like we did in this base. Again, good for small things, mm -hmm. you can overwhelm it. This white sand takes the color beautifully. Like it's pastel compared to like the liquid in the bowls, but for sand, it actually looks quite vibrant. Got ourselves some nice colorful towels here. Can't say it. We've got ourselves some nice colorful towers here. 
So we're just gonna let these dry a little bit overnight and see what they look like in the morning. See how much they've kept their shape, how much they've kept their color. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It's been 24 hours. We've let them dry. You can touch them. They're not invincible. Yeah. You can break them inside of the structure. It actually kind of still comes apart. Mm -hmm. So but the outside dried so nicely. Yeah, like, there's a nice shell. It might not be all the way dry inside. That's but I think okay. Something about how it drains, leaves like more glue on the very outside. But you can hold them all right. Yep. How cute is that? That's cool, guys. So yes, you can make little dribble sandcastles that are gonna last a little while. Just depends on how long you want them to last. Well, we did it. We mm -hmm. made a thing. So Have yes. fun, guys. Yeah. Super if, easy to do at home. If you guys do this, take a picture on Instagram and send it to us, we wanna see. Guys, that's it for today, but be sure to hit that button down there to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a cool video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.